I rode in there. This old as is used. So I made the, the bar so low <laughs> for anybody to have high expectations on this. For, you made the bar so low that it's amazing anybody wanted to buy it. Let's see what- uh... Absolutely. This is the plaintiff, Miss Delora. She says she sold some Prada items to the defendant, and the woman's trying to stiff her. She has 100% positive rating as a seller. She wants her money and is suing for the $500 she's owed. This is the defendant, Ellen. She says the products she purchased weren't shipped properly. And when they arrived, the bottles of perfume leaked and they wouldn't spray correctly. eBay stepped in and refunded her money. This lady's stressing her out and she owes nothing. She's accused of purloining some perfume. The defendant has filed a camera suit for $500 for emotional distress. All parties, please raise your right hands. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Million in our forum, the People's Court. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right. Ms. Delora, you are suing Ms. Ellen for $500 that you say you are out as a result of a business transaction you guys had. Why don't you tell me, soup to nuts, what happened here, Ms. Delora? Well, initially, I put up a sale uh, of some as-is perfume. Everything I purchase is from outlets, high retail, and stores, and my son would call it my retail therapy, emotional abuse. <laughs> However, I purchase everything. It could be three years old. It could be two years. In the past, I was just going to account- ask, some of the stuff that you were selling was more than half-used perfume of- Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, it was absolutely as is. And I was able to obtain the original verbiage from the description of the ad. I wrote in there, this old as is used. So I made the, the bar so low <laughs> for anybody to have high expectations on this. For, you made the bar so low that it's amazing anybody wanted to buy it. Let's see what... Uh, absolutely. Yes. And she Product solicited. candy floral kiss with box... Used, discontinued, old X collection, all bottles as is. Please zoom in, yo, see. Cosmetic bag is dirty <laughs> inside. All right, and that I just, that's so attractive. I can't wait to get your used perfume. So just tell me, right. when you put that online, how many takers did you have? I actually had quite a few. I had three people watching it at a $50 bid. And I got a solicitation from um, the defendant asking if I would uh, sell the perfume for $55. Now, I haven't read these emails in depth because I have a lot of other uh, fish I'm frying in pans in life. And so I thought she wanted it for $55, but she wanted it for $35 plus postage. I do will and deal with people because they will say to me very truthfully, I don't have enough money. My husband's going to kill me if I buy this wallet from you. Can you put the price down to include postage? So I do that. So I really was hesitant to sell to her because eBay has more of a flea bay kind of abusive system. What's flea bay? Where, uh, <laughs> it's my term for for eBay because you're mad at eBay. Tick. Okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. The fleas, the ticks, and the pandemic. The freeloaders, the scammers have surfaced. Through okay. All through well, I, I, yeah, I, hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So she offers to you, if you haven't sold it, will you sell it to me for 35 plus postage? And you say to her, sure. I actually counterbid 45 because okay. I didn't read it thoroughly. So and, uh, she accepted it. She paid. And I printed, printed the label. Okay. So, so, yeah, we were fine. Then everything everything was fine. is great. And then what happens? You ship it to her house. I don't know. Well, because all my ratings are 100% on every platform. It's all the same thing. Thanks for the packaging. Thanks for the extra gift. And I did include an extra gift. 
So I get an email saying not to be picky. I just remember the gist. Um, not to be picky, but there's juice missing out of a bottle. And I said, okay. So we bicker. We do our thing. And I said, I got to go into save my account mode. So I actually appealed before she returned it. And eBay said, oh, maybe she won't return it, blah, blah, blah. So this isn't an issue of a label. Just it's a moment. An issue of Just her. a moment. Let's sure. look at the actual text that she sent to you. Hi there. You were correct. It got here quick. I'm very pleased with most of it. I'm sending a picture, though. The large bottle of Candy Kiss looks like it leaked and dried. Please compare the picture I sent with the original picture. You can see that about 50% of what juice that was there in the original is gone from when I got it. I'm honestly not try to be picky, but that's almost an ounce. Now, here is a picture of what was in the listing. Right, and then that's what I got the day I opened it, and you can see Okay, no, this is not, bottle. is this, I'm sorry, is this your picture? Yes, those are the pictures I sent. Okay, give me a moment. Which is the bottle that uh, leaked, the white one? The white one. The white one that's the, clear. The bigger that, white one. Okay, yes, and you sir. wanted me to compare that with- The original. Picture in the what listing, you can see that in the original picture, the white one was way higher. So it's like half of it was gone. So you say that to her and what does she say to you, Ms. Ellen? She offered me a dollar refund. I mean, yes, your email to her was kind of nice. It wasn't like anything out of, out of this world. I don't know why her response was so, let's see here. Is this what you responded to her? Yes, when Ms. we Gimlet. were bickering back and forth. Okay, I, I want the um, bickering back and forth part. That's the part I want to see. Yeah, it's on the other side of that That page. was where she accused me of being the reason my son committed suicide, basically. Okay, can you give me... I'm no. very sorry to hear that, ma'am. Can you just give me one moment to find what I'm looking for? I'm looking for... So what she's alluding Just a moment. To. What was Ms... Here, the only person I'm talking to is Ms. Delora. Ms. Delora, right. what was your response to this July 14th email? Oh, the response, it was on the back of the 18. And I think that, oh, this is her. I'm not saying that in shipping, the candy leaked, the, the perfume leaked, even the picture shows. I do understand that you gave me free use Mac Thin Clutch and it was appreciate everything else. And I said, I'm not sure what happened. My vision isn't the greatest. Uh, maybe the heat and Paso Robles. I don't know what happened. Because from when it got to her to there, I don't know. Okay, how did you and receive, I kept her Ms., uh, Ms. Ellen, how did you receive the package? How was it packaged? Um, it wasn't packaged as would be described as to USPS standards the way she sent it. How so? Um, perfume should be bubble wrapped twice around, according to the, the website. It should be filled with, like, packing peanuts, um, you could see that the two is had, this the box? that the perfume had leaked everywhere. Is this the box? Yes, that's the box. That's not a particularly sturdy box, Ms. Delora. Yeah. This is a K-cup box, like the... <laughs> I went to go purchase new packaging because that is not my MO at all. Well, but this time and it was. So, so in any event, uh, Ms. Ellen, what were you trying to achieve when you sent her the original email? Were you trying to get some money back and keep the rest of it? Because you said you were happy with the rest of it. I was actually happy with the rest of the perfume. I could tell that it was a quality perfume, that it smelled good, but I could tell that through shipping, the leakage made the one bottle very cloudy. And I don't think I should, I didn't think I should have had to pay, even if it is a discounted rate that I bought for three quarters of a bottle when I only received one quarter is not what was pictured. At some point you receive an email from her, what a petty, petty, vindictive gaslighting person and a thief. What happens to your family has nothing to do with your evil, ungrateful spirit. I am glad to exit eBay. Glad to know you will not win this dispute. You didn't buy new. Do not contact me again. Maybe there is a reason your son snapped. I feel oh, like yeah, snapping. Yeah. Mine I almost do. died four tykes yes. this year. Jesus, lady, you got issue. Now you gave me your name on Facebook. I don't mind letting people know you're a thief. What happened there, Ms. Uh, Delora? 
she told me what a great perfume retailer she was how she knew all the shipping, how she knew every rule on eBay. So in my mind, all credibility goes out the window because now this seems like a shipping scam to me. So I'm sitting here going, "Why?" she said, look me up. I sold perfumes. I'm a great retailer. Yeah, but what's in it for her if she sends it all back? Like, what's in it for her? Other than trouble. That's what I want to know. Right, exactly. Because she sent so it all back I, broken. Normally when, okay, now we're going to talk about that. You you receive it, and according to you, everything is broken, and you're going to prove to me that everything was broken by showing me a picture that you say shows that everything is broken. How am I going to see in that picture that everything is broken? What am I supposed to be looking at? That's how I received it. Okay. Where, what is broken, way, though? Honey. Everything's gone. I don't know what you're saying. All the what lotions is... are empty. <laughs> the half empty lotions that you sold her are empty. empty. Got it? No, no, no. Those were full. And she kept three no, items. Aren't. So there was um, a miniature, a, a vial sample. Did you keep any of the items, post. Ms. Ellen? She kept three. No, Judge, I did not. She says that you didn't return little samples that was part of it. I swear I did. I returned everything in the condition in which I received it. I'm just trying to figure out, Ms. Delora, why you think there's a scam. Like, what? She scammed you so she could take up all this time in order to scam a sample that you can just go to a counter and get? No, she did not keep just a sample. She kept a miniature bottle of my original purchase and a 1.7 ounce of Prada Kiss that were practically new. Again, she just stated that she was very happy. Why were you writing than... that? Yeah, I know. Her, her email to you wasn't hostile. I'm trying to understand why you wrote her an email talking about how her son snapped. Apparently, there was some her emails son committed intertwined. suicide, and you thought you'd stick that in her face? No. What could possibly justify that? I don't know if it's true. But why because would, she you obviously to think it's true because you're saying to her, <laughs> I can see that your son snapped and I can see why your son snapped. So she went to my dead son's Facebook page and grabbed a spot picture of yes. his dead father. Yes. And sent it to me. What do you mean sent it to and you? Again, to my son's again, page. Well, I'm talking now to Ms. Ellen. What do you mean dead. sent it to you? You sent went it there. You took a picture of his father. You went to my dead son's Facebook page, took a picture yeah. of his dead father, and then sent it back through to me through email. What for? She, again, so there I is look an over email my that now? is missing where she told me to go look her up. Produce it. So I went and Produce looked her it. up. Can I and ask you so a question, Ms. Delora? Why would you go to her deceased son's Facebook page? She told me to look her up. And, I'm Google. sorry. And then take a picture of her deceased I don't even father. know who the person is. And then send so it I to said her. So when I said to her Why in that email, that? I said, is this the person you're talking about? It no, is you not you said, good this is why you for you to tell people. This is why you what, Ms. Ellen? I, I said, said it's not this good. This is why you should not. She said to me with my ex-husband's picture, this is why you shouldn't share your information. Like showing to you that she could get to you? Exactly. No. Yes, I call, why would and you I send that? Don't why say would you? No, I, I saw send her it, a and copy it said, of the email. This is why you shouldn't give personal and share so much personal information. Why would you do that if not to sound threatening? I am an analyst. When she told me to look her up, I put on my Nancy Drew hat and wanted to know who I was dealing with. I found nothing of what she said about herself to be true. The only thing that popped up under her last name was a Facebook picture. I sent it to her. I didn't post it. I didn't blast it. I didn't. I said, it, it's not good for you to give people your information because they can do this. Well, you were just trying to be yeah. helpful. You weren't trying to throw And me. I called eBay okay. immediately. Can you tell me Ooh. how it is that um, a $45 sale of used products, which I still can't get over, um, becomes a $500 lawsuit? Why would it be $500 now? For me, you ask. If she would have said straight with me, I don't have a lot of money. This is all I can afford. I'd like to keep it. That wasn't my Had situation. You're not going to say me. I, 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 hold on, Ms. Ellen, don't interrupt her. Go on, Ms. Delora. You know, had she talked with me and not just complained because I had that set up for another sale. Okay. I, I, and I, so I, I see a very I polite email 
where she says to you, I don't mean to be picky, but X. And then your response to that is to say, I'll give you a dollar off. You make a counter offer of a dollar. That, right. Because it was as is. Okay. Um, the problem as with, a, yes, you say that, but the reason you lost four appeals with eBay is that as is doesn't mean that you can send it in a way that evaporates it or leaks it or whatever else. And in the advertiser, there's this much perfume. And when it gets there, there's this much perfume. Uh, because yes, she's buying used perfume, but she's, and not, I'm supposed to she's not just buying glass. She's still buying used perfume. So her only complaint was, look, it seems like some of this leaked. And then she becomes, she becomes Nancy Drew. And then she pulls up the rules of shipping and everything else and how the U.S. Postal Service says don't send. I you know, don't know those shipping rules. No, I know. Nancy Drew gave it to me. And she tells me, look, what is the, what is, this is probably why this happened, but you shouldn't be sending it that way. You should be sending it ground so that doesn't happen. So there's no pressurization in the airplane, yada, 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 yada. The, but tell me how it became a $500 case. Tell me how that happened. Okay, so what I what I am stating is that is what if you bought it today, okay? For me, this is an abusive buyer. I've been selling no, very how is How are you going to prove to me? I'm going to get there. No, and get so there what now I'm, because I'm losing my patience. I have it all right here. This no, is all I got back. I, so you say but how is it that that's valued at $108.50 when you valued it at 45 with shipping? I had written if punitive damages or anything like that does not apply, then at the full value of to stop this in the future. So for me, it may be black and white and I could be totally See, wrong. See, here's the thing. And you sold on a platform called eBay. And so that means that both of you agree that you're going to be controlled by eBay's rules. That is what happens when you sell on a platform. So if there's, somehow you say, oh, whatever you get, it doesn't matter how you got it because it's as is. But when she sends it back, according to eBay's rules, then she has to pay you $500. I, I don't see That's it. not what I said. It is. You filed a lawsuit for $500. I, and you've got a I counterclaim indicated. against her, Ms. Ellen, for $500 for what? Emotional distress because what? Because of the email that she sent you? Because of the email where she went to, again, my dead son's Facebook page, got his dead father, sent it to me, and what she said, that freaked me out. And then when she blamed me for my son, be son snapping. I mean, who does that to somebody? Who does that to somebody, Ms. Delora? How do I know if anything she said is true? And if it is true, You're my deepest apology. up. You know it's true because it you, had already, true. you searched her Facebook because, you know, I've So why would you say to a human being, why would you say that? No wonder your son snapped. You know snapped. why? Why? Because I was ready to snap with her. I have spent 2021 losing everything in my life. My cars, my property, everything. So I myself have tragedies in life. The initial email she sent. I just don't understand a, how that would ever justify you telling someone, no wonder your son killed himself. Because I didn't believe her. Well, it turns out you were wrong, right? And I said, shame on me if I'm wrong. And I deeply apologize if what is going on in your life is true. But we're all living where, a tragedy. Where is all, any but, of, you know, you any of what you just you said, none that of that was of in the email, father. just so you know. Not one word that you just said, no. shame on me if it's true. And, uh, you know, but, what you said was, you evil person. Your personal life has nothing to do and with I what's started happening. Okay, at we're that done. Point, we're done. Stick a fork in me. I am done. On your claim against Ms. Ellen, zero. This will be now the fifth time that someone tells you that. And on your That's claim okay. against her for emotional distress, I understand what you are saying. Okay? I do. I understand that that is distressing. But I am not going to order her to pay you $500 for saying it. Her punishment is that she is humiliated. Okay? Not at all. On, well, you should be. Um, but <laughs> I'm but not. that does not really. The fact that you're not talks to your character, lady. She lied okay. to me and okay. she kept my property. Uh, yeah, verdict for Ms. Ellen side on, of on that claim. Thank you, Judge. Uh, let's start with Ms. Deloria. Uh, you filed for $500 against her. You did not prevail. What are you thinking now? How do you, how do you react? I understand what I said was mean. If it was true, but does that justify someone breaking and keeping your property? In my mind, no. I am lost out property, and I had to pay $70 for it. Okay, well, I'm sorry, but you lose. Uh, Ellen, let me ask you. You lose, too. What, what are you thinking? 
Um, honestly, I'm okay with it because it was never honestly about the money. I just wanted it to be known how this woman treated me and her character. So just to know that maybe she'll get a chance to sit back and look at this one day and realize how messed up it is, is all I really need. All right. Well, you made your point. Okay. You made your point. Very good. Harvey? Well, Doug, I got to say, this is an interesting case because... Really, the judge had no jurisdiction because it was all mediated on eBay. It's sort of like an arbitration or a general mediation in a civil case that the forum for doing it is not small claims court. Do you, know, you ever go back to Astoria, maybe walk along Steinway Street? Yes. I remember years ago, maybe 10 years ago, my brother and I visited where our house was. And uh, we're looking outside and we call my parents and and we're asking them, did you put a fountain in between the two houses, your house and your neighbor's house? Right. And my mother's like, don't be ridiculous. That was years ago. We're not going to remember anything like that. My father says, did it have a little bluebird on top right. of it? And we're like, yeah. He goes, yeah. SEO and I or SO and I did that because we wanted to be good neighbors. We didn't want a fence. So they put the fountain. Oh, it was like adorable. And then we walked around and it's like beautiful. Now there's firm bars and it's a really, you know, it's not sure. how it looked when I lived there. But no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I like going back to my old neighborhoods too when, it, when I'm in Buffalo and I get yeah. a chance to see them. But it's kind of true that you really, you can't step in the same river twice. Oh, like I think you can step in it over and over. And it's changing up all that. It's and, just, and you always do want to come back and visit because right. it kind of brings back the nostalgia. Yeah. And it's fun. you look at it and your first thought is always the same thing. That tiny thing, it seems so big. Everything shrunk, right? right? Everything shrunk. Everything right? got really small. Yeah, and you were smaller. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is the plaintiff, Sharon. She says she sold her golden retriever to the defendant, and he only paid her half the money he owes her. She instantly regretted selling her dog to the defendant and doesn't really even want the money he owes her. She wants her dog back. She's suing for $500, the amount owed, or the return of the dog. This is the defendant, Bradley Noel. He says the woman threatened him, saying she was going to call a lawyer to get her dog back. And she was rejecting his payment of $500. His kids have bonded with this dog. There's no way he's giving it back to her. And if she doesn't want him to pay her the 500 bucks he owes her, then he won't. He's accused of a doggy downer. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says she is heartbroken that she sold her beloved dog to the defendant and she wants him back. But the defendant says there's no way he's giving the dog back because everyone is in love with him and a sale is a sale. It's the case of a real doggy downer. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Sharon, you are suing Mr. Noel for $500 or, and your preference is that he return your dog to you. Tell me what happened. On August 13, I sold my dog, Gio, for $1,000. What kind of dog was he, Gio? A golden retriever. And why were you, how old is Gio? Then he was six, six and a half months old. Why were you the selling? Plane. It's such a long story. Um, I bought Gio um, a bone and he, he enjoyed it. He loved it. He had it. He chewed it. He was playing with it. That was uh, Wednesday. Wednesday night, he woke me up and he had diarrhea really bad. And I called the vet I explained what had happened. He said that them bones, because they have chemicals or whatever it is to preserve them, that it will give a dog diarrhea. Okay, so it was all over the house. I was cleaning, shampooing the rug, washing the, I'm doing everything. My son called, because my son calls me every day. My son called, said, what's going on? I told him. Okay, you know, then... Well, you know, the dog's a lot of work. You're too old. You shouldn't be taking care of the dog. Can I you ask know, you a question? A Can I, how old are sure. you? Sure, 70. And he thinks at he 70, said, you're too old to take care of a dog? A puppy. 
said I should have got an older dog. A puppy's like having a baby. And it just was going on and on. At the moment, Whatever. you agreed I, with him, didn't you? I didn't know what to do. I had called my daughter-in-law to tell her, because she has a dog, and to tell her, don't ever buy them bones. So then she says, well, you know, you're t again, you're too old, you know, okay. you're but having Ms. a puppy. It's like having Ms. A Sharon, let's, at the bottom line is at some point you did agree with them, you just regret it, right? What? Huh, sure, I did regret it. Okay. So then everything happened so fast. Within like a half an hour, uh, Brad called to say he wanted to get Geo, and I, oh, okay, I guess. So he came, he gave the 500. So the deal was, was that he would give you 500 on that day, and then he would pay you the other 500 by when? Next weekend. Okay. And what happens between the first 500 and the second 500? Nothing happened. Well, yeah, I, something happened. You regretted selling Geo. Oh, so then I text to say that I made the, I made a huge mistake. Pretty much a, I had to come and get Geo. And she texted me back and said no. <laughs> so that was that. All right, Mr. Noel, tell so me then, when. Tell me how this goes down. You buy the dog, and then uh, you pay half, and then you're supposed to pay the other half by when? Uh, there was really no set date, but I told her that I would give her the other half uh, either the week after uh, from the purchase of the dog or the following week. Okay, and then uh, what happens? The you get a call a few days after you pick up the dog. <laughs> First of all, you pick up the dog, you bring the dog home. How many kids do you have? I have two. I've got an eight-year-old and a two-year-old. I mean, oh. three-year-old. All right. So you get the dog, and then you get a phone call a few days later from her saying, I've made a huge mistake. Uh, no. I get a, I get a couple text messages. She's giving me uh, tips on how to care for the dog. Uh, she's telling me uh, she's going to send me his allergy medication. And we're interacting pretty smoothly. And I could tell that she was going through some separation anxiety from the dog. And because I go through certain situations with the mother of my children, I know what it's like to be separated from your kid because that's pretty much what the dog is. It's her kid and now it's my third kid. <laughs> so uh, I made arrangements with her to, and I said that, you know, if you're feeling, you know, if you're comfortable and open to it, I can bring the dog to you all the way to Delaware like once or twice a month and he can spend a weekend with you because I understand what you're going through and I want to I think that's very sweet of that. you to offer. Never in your life do that. Yeah, I've, I've so, so I've learned. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Even if she had said, that's a great idea, you would never in your life do that because I get those cases when then the person doesn't return them. So d you never in your life do that if you expect to see the dog again. All right, so go on. So um, I made, uh, so the way my finances are set up, I can't just, you know, willy nilly pop up 500. So it had to be a couple of, uh, a, a couple of days. So I'm getting messages from Leah saying that- uh, Who's Leah? Her mom says she, uh, that is her daughter-in-law. Okay. Uh, she's saying that um, she doesn't understand what's going on. Everything seems to have gone so smoothly, but her uh, mother-in-law has, inst has instructed her not to accept any payments. All right. um, from that point on, it was unto my understanding if she's not accepting any payments and she's, you know- Let's see the a, first, uh, the text on August 16th. Sophie, who is Sophie mm -hmm. to you? That is my girlfriend. I hope wife. you understand. I know you will understand how I feel. I am heartbroken. All I do is cry. I made a huge mistake. Please, please, I need to get my boy back. I can't sleep, and all I did is cry. You only had him a few days. I'm sure you will get another puppy and love him the same. I will refund your deposit, and I will come pick him up. I'm so, so sorry, but I just can't go on without him. Please tell Brad I'm so sorry for any inconvenience. I would like to pick him up today. And then... Your girlfriend responds, I'm so very sorry, Sharon, but I have to say no. We're already very happy to have Gio, and we'd be absolutely devastated to part with him. Your family advertised your intent to rehome Gio on Facebook. We agreed on a deposit and another payment of 500 this week as full payment. As soon as you got back to us, we drove to Delaware to pick him up. We've been looking for a pup for months, and he immediately became part of our family. Giving him up would not only break my heart, but also the children's hearts. I'm really sorry you miss him, but we're not willing to give him up. Yeah, uh, she regretted giving up the dog from gate. She called back. She, they, her family offered a $5,000 to get the dog back. And $5,000? Yes. Her son called back and said, I will pay $5,000 to get this dog back. Oh my and gosh. God bless him. Yeah. That's what I said. And you know, now you can 
you know, there's, it, there's a little I bit more I just can't. I, you know, the only thing I'm sure of is that Geo is most loved. Yeah, there's no question. There is yeah, love for Geo yeah, everywhere. So they offered you five thousand dollars, not uh-huh. five hundred, but five thousand, and you said no yes. because that would then yes. break your children's hearts. Uh, my children and mine. My and baby too. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh wow. Oh wow. Oh God bless your son. Your Honor, at that point, because my son said he would pay any price just to have me stop crying. Because, I know. Your you know, son was, loves you. He he felt like yeah, the dog was too yeah. much for you. He gave you advice born out of love, and then he c- couldn't believe how that came back to bite him in, in the hind leg. And, he, uh, yeah. and then he just would do anything to erase your pain. You have a son that loves you very much. God bless him. Oh, wow. And then Mr. Noah wouldn't take it, which means they love Gio very much. That is correct. Okay. All right. So where are we now? So we have the executed sale of a dog, but why do you still owe her the 500, Mr. Noel? Because she says at some point she said, okay, give me the 500 then. And then you didn't give it to her. So talk to me about that. That's, That's not true. I sent over, like I said, I can't just take money out of my finances. I zelled her daughter, uh, her daughter-in-law's Leah, five hundred dollars, and it was denied. And uh, so I looked at my messages, and I was like, "What's going on?" And she said, "I was advised not to accept any payment from you." Right. And I so said, here's well, a text from accept- from uh, the person you were dealing with. Hey there, I'm not sure what is going on. My mother-in-law told me to decline any payments. I don't know what you guys are going through. I don't want anything to do with it. She asked me to do her a favor and find somebody who wanted a dog. That's what I did. I made the post on Facebook. I told her I don't want to be involved in this. I'm extremely upset about it. I don't know what the problem is. And you explained she wants the dog back, but my family doesn't want to part with him. Yeah. Okay, but then now, why haven't since then, all this stuff is going on in August. Since then, why haven't you paid the five hundred dollars. I, w- I was called and told that she's taking me to court. Okay. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. But you know, you owe the five hundred dollars, right? I yeah. I told her. I said yes. I will make. I sent her a message and said I will make the five hundred dollars available to you once I have it. Yeah, but then she had to file a case because you didn't pay her. No, she filed the case because she she was under the impression that she was going to get her dog back. When did she file the That's case? That's what she told me. You. She said I'm going to sue you for this dog. Yeah. And then once she started getting upset at me, I started. I was like, well. I don't, I, I know I owe you this money. I want to give you this money, but why are you attacking me? She's stalking my house. She went around my house and told me what my property looks like. I was like, wait, wait, say that again. I said she was around my property. She was like, I know what your house looks like. I'm like, why are you even, you're in another state. How did you even, I don't get it, but wait, I get I it. Get it. Yes. Wait, so did you go to his property? No, and- after I did not get the money, I went to the police department and told them what happened. When I was leaving the police department, I was looking for my way back to the turnpike. And as I was passing, it said his street at his street. I rode past it because I wanted to see. He said he had a a fenced in yard and I wanted to see. I just rode past it and then went back on my way to the turnpike. Yeah, but how does he know that? I I was not stalking. Right, but how does he know that you even rode past it? Did you tell him I know what your house looks like? Because I called him and told him. I went to the police department. I said, and they told me I had to go to Delaware. So that would mean you would have to come to Delaware to the court. He starts screaming and yelling and said, I'm not coming to court in Delaware. My wife's not coming to court in Delaware. And my dog's not coming to court in Delaware. And I hope you make it to court. I said, are you threatening me? And he hung up the phone. That was the conversation. What I see is the deep, deep regret that she has, uh, which you understand, that she didn't, yeah. she wishes she didn't part with Gio. You, Mr. B- yes. Mr. Noel, are 100% correct. It's a consummated sale. And I'm sorry that you have regrets, Ms. Sharon, but it's time for you to think about a different dog because you sold the dog and you don't get to go back on the contract. But you, Mr. Noel, also don't get to go back on the contract. So once you got sued, the right thing to do was send her the 500 bucks and then just, you know, figure it out after that. I mean, um, either way, I'm going to, I am not going to issue an order 
ordering Mr. Noel to return the dog to Miss Sharon, that's not going to happen. It is irrelevant that it's not in the best interest of the dog. It isn't, but it's, but that's, I'm not even considering that because dogs are property in the eyes of the law. And this is a sale fair and square, but you've got to go. And the only reason the second part of the sale didn't happen is because you didn't let it happen because you told her to deny the, no. the request. The, to deny the payment. It didn't happen. He didn't send the money. My You're not listening to me. Your daughter-in-law sent him. But you have him. the thing from the bank. Yeah. He never tried to make a payment. I'm not sure what is he going on. Did. My mother-in-law told me to decline any payments. I said that after. No, it was after. Okay. It, it doesn't matter. Ms. Sharon, you are that. correct. You are owed $500. And I am ordering you, Mr. Noel, to pay the $500. Okay, because okay. it's inexcusable that then another two months passed. Because I got called to come here. Okay. I'm ordering you to pay her the $500. <laughs> Verdict for the plaintiff, Absolutely. $500. Good luck, folks. Absolutely. You look great, by the way, Judge. You're aging you very nicely. Well, in a case that ends up with probably everybody agreeing here, the plaintiff is going to get her $500 back. Uh, Mr. Noel is going to have to pay that. And I gather you're really willing to do it. Am I right, Mr. Noel? Absolutely. I told her I'd give her $500 as long as she stopped disrespecting me and having Karen moments for no reason. How is the dog now, by the way? The dog fitting in great with your family? Absolutely. The dog is fitting in amazing with the family. My sons love him. I love him. My uh, my girlfriend loves him. And we plan on being with him for a very, very long time. Well, good luck with him. Good luck with him. Miss Sharon, let me ask you, you had him as a puppy. How long did you had him? Six and a half months. You really got attached to him. Uh, and I know we can all understand how you feel. What have you done since then to, uh, you know, to, to make yourself feel a little better? You're still missing the dog, I presume. I'm just missing my dog. Will you get another pup? I don't know. I don't know. Well, look, I feel sorry for you. I really do. But good luck to you. Um, get another Thank puppy. You. you know, puppies are full of love. Another one will help you out. Seriously. You would agree with that, Harvey, wouldn't you? I mean, Doug, look, as sad as this is, the plaintiff sold the dog and a sale is a sale. I mean, I hate to say this, I, but it is simply the law. The dogs are considered property. And once you sell it, it's gone for good. My advice, maybe the plaintiff can heal her heart by getting another puppy. That always seems to work in the end. What motivates you to work hard? Uh, I suppose in the early days of our careers would have been, you know, raising the children. Right. Now it's that we raise three divas and they cost a lot of money. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what motivates me to work hard on cases um, is the fact that every single case is the only case that that person has in all likelihood, and it's really, really important to them. So, and to, they're interesting. You so. want to live up to it. You yeah. want to, you want yeah. to do your best for them, right? Right. right. Yeah, well, I, I used to think I thought I had a really strong work ethic until I met you. <laughs> And then it kind of shattered my illusions because you are relentless and, and you are a dynamo. You never, ever stop. That's not a good thing, though. Like, <laughs> I, I used to think that was a compliment. And now I realize it's just like a malady, you know, that, that it's 1030 at night and I'm still trying to answer emails and do um, stuff. I, there's no wonder I can't sleep. Uh, it's a virtue, though. Nah, no, it's a virtue for the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs>